the ladies out here. Okay, good. Brady, what's your impression of the, the rookies you have on your side of the ball right now? Um, it's actually just about really the rookies on the team and like us kind of building them and let them grow. We got a bunch of receptive guys. I love that. Um, a lot of guys, you know, really getting to what you thought they would be as far as from an evaluation standpoint, from a coach's um, livelihood, and really getting really good information from our scouts um, and what they were before they got to us. And it's really helping us coach these guys now. Like, you know, you just kind of love that. You go with that process. Um, and it's, it's really unique here, particularly with this year with this football team. So it's kind of fun. What if uh, with Michael Hoyt transition to uh, outside linebacker, what have you seen from him in terms of um, development and also kind of as a leadership role with that group now? You know, I wouldn't get carried away in saying it was a leadership role for Mike. Um, I think Mike's kind of feeling in himself and finding his own role. Um, I think what he started to do at the end of last year really is going to help him, you know, define leadership, define what that means. I think how he leads is kind of by example, um, just from who he is and where he's been, um, you know, coming from what he's come from, being having a, um, the availability to play multiple positions. I think all that stuff helps with his leadership. I wouldn't say, you know, put too much on him or put too much on his plate. You know, you got to realize he's still young at the position. I can't remember what game exactly he switched over full time. But I know it wasn't a long time, especially for this league and how it goes. So all those guys in there learning and growing together, um, adding their coach this, this year and Joe, I think that's really going to be helpful for all of them. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you see in uh, Jordan Fuller coming back? And, you know, what are you expecting from him this year? Hoping, hoping obviously, that he's, that he's healthier. Again. I think my expectations really don't matter. You know, it's really about the expectation that Jordan sets for himself. And I know those standards are very high. Um, I think him being the leader that he is, and a leader that we know that he can be, that he was as a second year player, being a captain on our Super Bowl run team. Um, I think all those things come into play. I think the calm, the ease uh, for some of the younger people that's going to be playing around them is something that's really defined for him. Um, you know, going into this year, um, I'm just fired up to see him get a, a, some snaps healthy and to, and, to, and to maintain that health throughout a season, um, uh, which he hadn't done last year and couldn't quite get right throughout the whole process. So I'm really fired up for him and, and, and what's going to happen from his development. Raheem, how do you view the star position now going from Jalen, who was, I guess you'd probably say the prototype for that spot, to you know, having a, obviously different guys in, there in the mix? It's hard to even mention Jalen because like, he's the prototype for every position. Yeah. Um, but when you talk about what it is, it's really the increased toughness. It's really the short space quickness. And when you put a guy like the Kobe, you put a young Jolly in there, um, they definitely have those tools and those attributes. They definitely lack um, the size that Jalen had, which is kind of unique. Um, but uh, those are the things that we look for. Those are the things that you look for, like, you know, just around the league in general. And, and those guys that we have right now going out there, you know, going out to getting those reps are kind of certainly um, showing those attributes and being able to do some of those things. Jalen provided sort of a unique kind of ability just with his size, either outside corner or whether you plant him in inside. I don't think it really matters. He's kind of unique in, that just in his own right. How much have you seen Ernest Jones really take on a leadership role, especially since he's been here for three years now? Ernest, you know, kind of came in a little bit differently in the Hoyt, kind of in that leadership position. You know, it's like drafting a quarterback. You know, no matter what round you get drafted as a quarterback, you you got a certain amount of leadership responsibility. It's no different in our, in our room as like either safety or inside linebacker. Um, so not to disregard your Hoyt leadership role and really give the credit to the, the inside linebacker position really holds that leadership role just in general around the league. You know, you're talking about the close calls, you're talking about setting defenses, you're talking about potential of being a, a green dot, whether it be him or safety. Um, and right now, Ernest is our green dot going out throughout the process, doing some of those things. So um, he certainly developed. Um, being with Bobby last year certainly helped him from, from off the field standpoint um, and certainly an on the field standpoint, those two guys being together within that room, um, having a couple of different position coaches going from Shula back to Shula again. Um, getting a little information from Beak and being a, even more involved in the system, I think only helps him. Uh, really fired up to see where he can go this year. Really, really fired about Ernest and what he can become. Your opportunity, the opportunities that he had wearing the green dot last year, just what, what do you recall from that and how has that translated to this spring? You know, I really think back to his rookie season, you know, and the, when he was out there playing in the preseason and he handled it seamlessly. I, I know you guys remember the first drive we had, he had about a 97 yard drive, 97 play yard drive. And it was really the only time where he's kind of been a little bit of miscommunication between me and him. And since that point, I think he's handled that thing extremely well. I think he's a natural leader. I think he's kind of he's kind of built for it, so to speak. And that's just who he is. What, uh, a couple more guys. What do you, would you like to see out of Darian Kendrick? Uh, this this during offseason workouts, training camp, and going into things. A little similar when you talk about expectations for a guy. Um, what I want to see from Darian Kendrick is exactly what he's given me: um, urgency, 
Um, he's given me complete and absolute hustle. Um, he's given me some playmaking ability on the ball and off the ball. He provides great energy and juice just with his enthusiasm as a personality. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him, to him grow um, to his highest level, whatever that is. You know, I don't want to set a ceiling for him. Um, I don't want to set a bar for him. Um, I think we don't know yet, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, you know, you talk about these rookies and they get these opportunities to play in the National Football League very early. It's going to be ups and flows, and he certainly had his fair share. Um, but again, you guys remember very shortly getting that guy in training camp and having the ability to get excited about him when Jalen was out, seeing what him and Kobe were doing as very young players, getting Rochelle back into the mix um, is all really exciting. How exciting is it to have as a core a bunch of young guys? I mean, you're trying to mold and a lot of teaching this year for you. Nothing new for me, um, Mike. I, I live there. You know, uh, the, the best players want to be taught. And um, I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be a young head coach in this league and had a very young football team, and I look at it it's very similar, except I got Aaron Donald and, and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup and some veteran leadership guys that these guys can lean on and learn from. Um, and we got some other leaders on this team that's kind of been mentioned with the Fullers and the Cams and just some of the experience that they've been through, whether it be good or bad. You know, I guess you got to look back at it when you tell your guys, tell them what would you tell your rookie self? And having this many rookies, you got a lot of things to tell these young guys, and I think it's like a good thing for us. You like the speed that you have right now. The speed? Yeah. Um, right now, looks good, you know, on paper. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously you got to go out there and play, and how you play is really determines the speed. You know, speed is based on the knowledge you're able to obtain and how fast you're able to play uh, with the things that you know. So you got to go out there and play that thing. You know, I don't know what um, time 40 say, but I know that when you get guys to play fast and run fast at the ball, um, your speed of your team definitely looks better. All set? That's good. Thanks. Take it easy, man. You do.
Come, guys. Well, there's a lot of them out there, right? Yeah, on both sides, which which is cool, you know. Particularly when we get kind of going with the twos, got a lot of guys that are just kind of learning how to play the NFL game, you know, with each other. So they're doing a good job. You know, what you're trying to get done in OTAs is obviously build that foundation, uh, stack it, and then the biggest message to those guys is, hey, learn from the vets that are doing it, because there's a lot of vets here that have done it at a high level for a long time. But also, when you make a mistake, which you're going to make mistakes, how can you avoid making that mistake a second time, you know? So a lot of guys uh, out there doing some good things and a lot of good things to coach off of. What are some of the things you like so far about Stetson Bennett from what you've seen so far? Well, he's really invested in this thing, you know, and, and we knew that coming in. Just, you know, obviously the success he had at Georgia and, and our scouting department, and Les and all those guys, just doing a great job of, of, you know, letting us know kind of what kind of guy he is. But, uh, you know, again, he's he's like everyone else. I mean, there's there's times he's swimming out there in terms of just how much information we're giving him. Um, I think he's best when the ball's just snapped. You know, this is all—all all this stuff is is new to him in terms of the verbiage. Uh, but when that ball snapped, you can just tell he is. It's not too big for him, you know. He can he can breathe easy when that ball snap, and he's got kind of that natural game as well. For you as a coach, when you have a young team or a lot of young guys out there, what kind of different approach maybe do you would take? Maybe if it was a more team coach veteran, uh, you have to just kind of breathe a little bit more and be patient with some things, obviously. But you know, at the same time, you got to let them. Hey, this this league's urgent, you know, and you don't want to force. You know, too much down these guys, but at the same time, September's coming when we're trying to, uh, you know, build to that point right now. So, um, you know, again, they're they're out there. You try to trim back the script just a little bit, but also, hey, we do motion, we do move around, we do change the strength quite a bit. So, if we baby them too much, then when the time comes for preseason and the guys that are going to be playing in September, they're a little bit behind. So, you know, if they're going to make mistakes, let's make them right now when we're out here on the grass. You know, just going against each other. What's it like trying to uh, maybe? I guess get this thing in motion with an O line that suffered so many injuries last year. There's some guys gone, a lot of guys coming back. You got some young guys in here. Can you give me your outlook on it? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, it's uh, something that I'm, you know, personally been familiar with, just with a lot of a lot of movement in the offensive line room. And obviously, these guys, you know, went through quite a bit last year, historical levels in terms of the injuries. It's a new year, though. You know, we added some pieces, added quite a few pieces. Uh, you know, and so you're out there and just trying to mix and match right now. It'll be fun, uh, um, you know, when we get back into training camp, get no boom out there, and the best five are going to play. And, and you know, right now, uh, you know, Wendy's doing a great job, offensive line coach, of mixing and matching who's at right guard, who's at left guard, mixing and who's in there at center and stuff like that. So uh, it's a work in progress. We're only five days in through OTAs, and by September, we'll have the best five out there. How important is versatility for these guys being able to play multiple? multiple spots. Yeah, I mean, it's it's huge, not just for O line, it's huge for, for any position, obviously. You know, when we get to September, you want to feel pretty dang good that you've had some continuity, a left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. But after those first five, the rest of the guys got to mix and match because you only can dress so many guys. So that's, that's this is the time to do it right now, to see what guys, you know, where they're comfortable, if they can move outside at tackle, if they're guard only, all right, left side, right side, uh, what, what have you. What's it been like uh, to so far to work with uh, Stafford. No, oh, it's been awesome. He's a uh, he's a he's a great professional. You, you knew about him, you know, not working with him, but obviously, you know, talking with Sean, knowing that guys that worked with him in Detroit knew what kind of guy he was. He, he was it was almost undersold, you know, how, uh, how how good of a guy he is and what what how great of a teammate uh, he is. Um, wants to be coached still at this age. He has so much knowledge. You know, I always say these vets that have had so much experience and so much, um, um, you know, good work in this league, you know, we can learn as much from them as, as they can learn from us. So uh, it's been a pleasure working with them, and, you know, we're just getting started with this thing. And at, at the other end of the spectrum, what have you seen from Stetson Bennett so far? Yeah, same, same kind of thing I was saying earlier, just, you know, with um, when that ball snapped, you can just, that's probably when he's at his best right now in terms of just, 
continue to learn the verbiage and all that kind of stuff and, and, and managing that huddle, that's all new. All this, all these words are new and that's always the biggest struggle for all the positions, particularly the quarterback, you know. So he's continuing to work on it. I know he puts in a lot of time with our quarterback, uh, Zach Robinson, whether it be on the weekends um, or obviously, you know, during the week getting, you know, script ready and stuff like that. But when that ball snap, I mean, he's a football player and, and it shows up there. Staying on the top of the the Kua, what have you liked so far, brother? What have you also seen from from the Ricky Robinson. Yeah, he's a, he's a good sized kid. He's got he's got a, a good frame to him. He catches the ball really effortlessly. You know, he can stay grounded through the catch and, and uh, so he's doing a good job with it and, and uh, you know, particularly moving him around quite a bit, you know, not babying him at all with with the motions and the alignments and stuff like that. And uh, so he's doing a good job. You can tell, you know, all you have to do is look at these, especially the young guys, just look at their eyes when they're in the huddle, you know, and you can tell the guys that are swimming and the guys that aren't. And uh, He definitely has a calm demeanor about himself and is, is fitting in nicely. With everything that went on with the O-line last year, I'm just curious if any of the guys have, if you've been able to do, to see the hunger that these guys kind of possess to not only vanquish what happened last year, but regain where they were, you know, just a couple of years ago, which was a Super Bowl victory. Yeah, a lot. You know, it's a, it's a good question again because a lot of these guys, you know, were on that team that won that Super Bowl, and they know they can play at a high level. And um, you don't want to look too far back in the past, but you know, hey, learn from you know the mistakes that happened, whether they were physically and, and what they could have done with their bodies. Some of it were. were for stuff that they couldn't even control, you know. So, hey, it's a whole new year. And, you know, these guys are just eager. That a lot of guys that played a lot of ball in 21 and, and before that, uh, you know, didn't get to play a lot of ball last year, and they're just eager to be back out here practicing. And again, I think Sean said it last week, but just the the youthful energy we have uh, on top of it with all these young guys, it's it's been uh, it's been pretty cool. A couple more, guys. Oh. All right, cool. Good cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah, we'll see you soon. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Good, thanks. I'm sure you guys got a million questions for me. This is awesome. <laughs> so, you know, at this time of year, I know coaches are accustomed to uh, indoctrinating rookies and whatnot, especially special teams right. coordinators. How, how, how's that going so far for you, and how are you keeping track of so many guys? You know, there's a lot of names, <laughs> names to learn, but, you know, anytime you're coming in, you're learning a bunch anyway. So um, for me, I think it's been a really good situation, you know, obviously having – Four, four rookie specialist, um, done a great job working together. The guys have rallied around them. They've had some really good sets today, uh, really this week and last week. But, um, you know, not just the specialists, though. We got a lot of rookies to bring along from every position. And, and really, you know, I think from a great testament, like Coach McVay this morning was talking about the, the veterans of the group, the guys that are a little bit older that have been here, bringing those guys along. And, and I think it's showing up. Guys are coming, bringing guys out with them early, um, doing some stuff, doing some work, and it's been big for us. It's going to help us help us grow. When you do have four rookie specialists, what sorts of things do you emphasize or what steps are kind of necessary in their development to make sure you're bringing them along the correct way? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is the fundamentals, right? So, like, understanding their swing path, their steps, their footwork, um, working on their deficiencies, but also keeping their strengths the strengths. Um, those things are, are paramount to what we're trying to achieve. And, and the best thing about having all rookies is they can grow together, right? They're all learning. There's no ego within the group. And I think that's been, that's been really big for us is they're, they're all open to everything that we have to offer and they work. That's the best thing right now is they're, they're able to work and they have no issues with it. What, uh, what have you seen from the, the place kickers so far? Both have been very good. Uh, you know, the, on the side work uh, this week, yesterday, and today were the first days of team. Uh, both of them obviously missed one kick they want back. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, they're hitting the ball really well, Good showing good leg strength, good rise, good ball flight. More importantly, you know, especially in this place gets windy. Right. You know, I, you know, when you think of L.A., you think of this area, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thought that the practice fields and things would be windy. Um, and so be able to hit a true ball flight and power, powerful kicks through that and, and make them right down the pipes is is really, really in, encouraging for, for everybody. You know, obviously, when we get to the team settings and have the whole team around and, you know, Matt Stafford's looking at them, like, watching it and Coach McVay and 
and that 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 carries weight when they're when they're being under pressure and they're when they're putting the kicks down the middle. So that's that's been awesome to see. When you, you talk with your colleagues throughout the NFL or college ranks, hey, I'm the situation you're in with all <laughs> new specialists in the NFL is that. Super rare, or do they look at you with envy? Do they look at you? With yeah, you know, it's it's a it's, it's an inter that's a great question because I think there's there's sides to both, um, and for for me, I, I think it is a rare situation. Obviously, I don't think it happens a ton, but I also think that it was encouraging to me was you know Springer and myself went out all on the road throughout. I don't know how many, we had 44, something like that, pro days and private workouts and different things, and we're able to get our hands on guys specifically and talk to them and make sure we match the right guys together because a lot of this specialist world, you have a lot of downtime. It's about matching the personalities and the, the mindsets and being knowing guys that will work. Um, and I think we did find that, so I think that was encouraging. And then the second part of that was how many special teams coordinators and former special teams coordinators or guys around that I'm – you know, specialists that I've worked with are like, man, you got the right guys. Like you, you brought the right guys in, and so that that was encouraging to me that that our work paid off. And uh, you know, now we're just gonna keep bringing them along. We're you know, there's, we're still rookies. We're still got a long way to go. Still in the off season, but we're we're making the right strides. The amount of roster turnover. There's also a lot of opportunity on, on special teams, especially. Mm -hmm. Find kick coverage units like that. Yeah. What's it been like, you know, evaluating those in other phases and guys getting the chance to compete in those? Yeah. Areas? Yeah. Great. I think um, you know, for us right now, we're doing a lot of drill work, so that everyone gets pretty much the equal number of reps. We're trying to figure out where guys can play best, where they fit best within the system, teaching them the fundamentals. No different than starting day one in a new system, like of offense or defense coordinator. Like, I'm, I'm going to teach things differently um, than Joe D did, and, and, and or somebody else that's been here. So just the fundamentals and building a groundwork and a, and a base that we can all grow together with has been the best thing right now and seeing the skill sets of not only the young guys but the veterans too right learning something new and and taking it and adapting with it and and really taking it by the horns and running with it making it their own which is that's that's the biggest thing when you get when you get guys to buy in especially the veterans the the, the sky's the limit with that all set cool appreciate you guys appreciate you. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 I appreciate it.